Hello my friend, good to see you again. This is Miss Kathleen Nubus. Thank you for continuous support and pray for uh, my ministry, Christian's ministry, Biblical Precept, uh, preaching, teaching online, and also gospel music. Today, uh, the message that I will focus on, the Old Testament, the battle is belong to the Lord, our God. And that is a continue learning and discover uh, the uh, historical event and uh, in the uh, second colonial chapter 32 and that is also gain wisdom from all these historical events and hero uh, we may gain wisdom how to live on this earth uh, uh, to uh, deal with uh, outside door uh, gain the wisdom how to live on this earth to please uh, heavenly father our lord jesus uh, today uh, let us look at the uh, the old testament the historical events, uh, King Hezekiah versus uh, Sennacherib, a king of Ashery. Uh, the historical events in the second uh, Chronicle chapter 13, uh, 32. If you have a Bible that has discovered uh, his victory uh, over the Ashereans. Uh, the chapter uh, 32, the provide us wisdom and godly counsel. The battle between the battle uh, between Hezekiah and uh, Sennacherib is not man's but God's. Oh, what factor resulted Hezekiah won the victory, and uh, Sennacherib loses the battle? What implication and biblical principle uh, that we should learn from this historical event? Let us discover it as father. Sennacherib, king of uh, Ashtore, challenged King uh, Hezekiah. When Sennacherib, king of uh, Ashtore, came uh, and invaded Judah, he laid siege to the fortified city, thinking to conquer them for himself. Sennacherib, king of uh, Ashtore challenged King uh, Hezekiah and said, On what are you basing your confidence that you remain in Jerusalem under siege? Now do not let Hezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe in him, for no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or the hands of my fathers. How much less will you, God, deliver you from my hand? In the verse 4 to 5. And Sennacherib also wrote a letter insulting the Lord. And saying uh, this against uh, uh, Hezekiah, just as uh, the gods of the peoples of the other lands did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of uh, Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. In the verse 17, even uh, Sennacherib's uh, officers spoken further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah in the verse 16. If then they call out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to terrify them and make them afraid in order to capture the city. They spoke about the God of uh, Jerusalem as they did about the gods of uh, the other people of world of the world the walk of a man's hands in the verse 19 facing Sennacherib's uh, attack and who intended uh, to make a war on Jerusalem King Hezekiah react as follow first he consulted with his officers, officials and um, military staff about blocking off the water from the spring outside the city and they helped him. Verses 3. In the second, he 
appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arms of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us in the fight our battle. In the verse 6 to 7. Third, King Hezekiah and the prophets Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. During the dialogue conversation between the King Hezekiah and Sennacherib, King Hezekiah affirmed, The Lord our God will save us from the hands of the king of Assyria. God answered King Hezekiah and Isaiah's prayer. The Lord sent an angel who annihilate, in other words, abolish, destroyed completely, exterminate, wipe out all the fighting men and the leaders and officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. So uh, Sennacherib withdrew to his own land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his gods, some of his sons cut him down with the sword. In other words, he was killed by his own son in the temple of his gods. In the verse 21 to 22, you can refer to, um, the Lord save King Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, King of Ashtoreth. King Hezekiah had every great rich and honor, and he made treasures of his silver and gold and for his precious stone, spice, shield, and all kind of valuables. He succeeded in everything he undertook. You can refer to verse 27 and 30. During the king Hezekiah's reign, his act of devotion are written in the vision of the prophet Isaiah in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Hezekiah rest uh, with his father and was buried on the hill where the tomb of David's descendants are. All Judah and the people of Jerusalem honor him when he died. Compare, that is compare and the contrast of both kings and the elements of victory. Hezekiah had to repent of his prideful heart. It's one of the element that Hezekiah won the battle. When Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death, he prayed to the Lord who answered him and gave him a miraculous sight. But Hezekiah's heart was proud, and he didn't respond to the king, uh, to the kindness show him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented of the pride, the pride of his heart, as did the people of Jerusalem. Therefore, the Lord's wrath did not come upon them during the day of Hezekiah. Hezekiah's faith, trust in the Lord, and ensured his people 
the Lord will save them. The Lord will save them. And the battle belonged to the Lord, their God. Hezekiah relied on the Lord rather than the arms of a flesh. He acted a devotion. He acted a devotion and called for godly counsel and prayed together with the, the prophet Isaiah. In contrary, in contrary, uh, Sennacherib rep, uh, depends on the arms of a flesh, his own hand, and the gods, the walk of a man's hands. He said, no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand. He emphasized my hand. In another, in other words, Sennacherib depends on his own hand, the arms of a flesh rather than the Lord God of Israel. And he also depends on his own hands and the hands of his father. Sennacherib's self, pride, and insult the Hezekiah's God, it results losing the battle. The application, what is the application and theological principle in this chapter that we should learn from? The first, humble, meekness, and moral obedience to the Lord are great again of God's blessing. The second, in every consequences depends on God rather than arms of flesh or self. Be aware of the battle, the battle belonged to God. Third, do not despise, do not despise of the power of prayers and godly counsel. My friend, each scenario and consequences in our nations or our family or our community, we better humble ourselves, bow down the knees, confess our sin, and rely on the Lord our God, rather than the man's of a flesh or arms of a flesh. Leave it all your consequences to God. The God. Let God to handle and to deal with as the king Hezekiah and Isaiah. Pray without the ceasing as the Lord vindicated and gained the battle for the king Hezekiah. Do not learn that Hezekiah once was proud after the God restored his health and healed the disease, prolonged his life more than 15 years. And he was pride and did not appreciate it and grateful the kindness that had shown him. But through, after all, he prayed and repented his uh, proudful heart and sins, so the God's wrath did not come upon him, and also save his life, save his country, the Israel, the Jerusalem. So may chapter, may the uh, Old Testament, uh, second colonial chapter 32, uh, bring us a wisdom how to deal with uh, our nation, uh, the conflict, and also how to uh, deal with our life, uh, each day's conflict. We know only humble meekness and moral obedience uh, to the Lord are the great gain of God's blessing. May God bless you, may God bless His Word, and may God also protect us, protect our nation.